Hi guys, Shira here. There is no secret equation to becoming rich, especially when you're living in Israel. Israelis generally live from one paycheck to the next or in a constant state of debt. Minimum wage in Israel is 4,300 shekel a month, which comes out to an hourly rate of 23.12. According to the Central Bureau of Statistics, as of January 2015, the average wage in Israel was 9,475 shekels a month. And to think that the average rental fee for one bedroom apartment outside the city center is 2,500 shekel a month. A lot of my viewers, as well as old friends from the old country, have asked me how I, both as a new Ola and as a newly married couple, plan on surviving financially in this country. To be honest, I wasn't sure how to answer this question, other than to work hard and hope for the best. And that's why I went to the interwebs, to Facebook, to older and more experienced individuals. I posted this question on a few Facebook groups, asking for good tips for smart finance and money saving. And I got almost 100 responses. Based on all these answers I got, I decided to put together this nice informative video for you young people and other individuals hoping to make it here in Israel. So number one, rule of thumb, spend only what you have. This may sound obvious, but a lot of people fall into this trap. The rule of thumb of financially smart living can be summarized in this single sentence. Lower your cost of living to meet your income or raise your income to meet your cost of living, but never spend more than you make. So first things first, your income must meet or exceed your expenses. This is basic math, I know, but if you ignore it, you will be set up for disaster. If you can guarantee yourself a high income, then great, you don't need to worry. But if you know that your 5,000 shekel salary will not cover a 3,500 shekel apartment, not including utilities, not including food, not including transportation, or any of the other expenses that come with life, well, you've got a problem. You have to plan your expenses based on your income, including where you live, the size of your apartment, the food you buy, etc., etc. If, based on your salary, you need to live in a rundown caravan in the middle of nowhere and meet green elephant and pasta, well, that's how it is. If you can't afford it, you can't go out to movies. You can't eat out in restaurants on a regular basis. You can't go on a shopping spree every week. Do not allow yourself to fall into debt. Number two, pay your bills first. After paying your required expenses, such as rent, utilities, your phone bill, only then can you see what money you actually have left in your bank account to spend on other, less vital things. Number three, cut up your credit cards. Studies have shown that spending cash helps you save your money. How? For two reasons. Well, first, it forces you to become a conscious spender. Instead of blindly swiping your credit card and hoping for the best, it forces you to make conscious decisions about every item that you buy. So let's say you're in a supermarket and you only have 300 shekels in your wallet. You will probably think twice before buying that container of ice cream or that package of top quality ground beef. Another reason cash is good? As humans, we're more motivated by loss and by gain. When you withdraw some of cash from the ATM, you actually physically watch that water bills slowly dwindle down to nothing, and it causes you pain. The good kind of pain that stops you from spending. Number four, this is a tip about how to grocery shop. Only go grocery shopping once a week, and never ever when you're hungry. Shop only at the supermarket chains that are known for having cheap prices. Buy cheaper products and no-name brands when they're less expensive. Buy certain items only when they're on sale. When bread costs five shekels a loaf, buy three and freeze. Never stop by a Macaulay just for one thing. If you're missing an item during the week, wait to your next major grocery shopping trip and buy it at the cheaper store. Knowing your prices on food and other grocery items is the best way to sell it on your grocery bill. Number five, never teshlumim. In Israel, we have this weird concept called teshlumim, where you can pay any bill in multiple installments. Don't fall into the trap of paying your 600 shekel grocery bill over a period of four months. You're just fooling yourself into thinking you have more money than you actually do. Number six, and this is a hard one, cutting back on expenses and your expectations. Try to track your spending output for a few months on Excel spreadsheet. And if you're still using a credit card, cut down to one credit card and use that credit card bill to track your spending that way. What is most of your money being used on? Are you being charged random fees by your bank account or credit card company? Are your electric and water bills higher than expected? Did you know that air drying your laundry is free? Did you know that a fan uses a fraction? No, no, a fraction, a fraction of the electricity that an air conditioner uses. Is there anything listed on your spreadsheet that you could have survived without? Did you really need that 18 shekel cappuccino knowing you have cheap instant coffee at home that would have given you the same caffeine effect? Did you know that tap water is practically free? Whereas purchasing a new water bottle every week can up your monthly grocery bill by 40 shekel? 
And also, did you know that in Israel you can get away with having fewer belongings? Yes, five pairs of shoes is more than enough, especially when you can barely afford to put food on the table. Number seven, budget. Okay, so you tracked your spending, figured out where you can cut expenses. Now you have to sit with your spouse or your partner, or whoever it is that you're sharing bills with, and make a monthly budget and stick to it. Number eight, always aim for discounts. Virtually anything can be purchased at a discount price if you try. Try couponing for groceries. Bus fares are often cheaper when you purchase multiple tickets at a time. Medications, which can be a huge expense, are always cheaper at the health fund pharmacies. If you're a university student or a soldier, all the bus companies, as well as many stores, offer special deals. If you shop in the shop or a privately owned store, you can always negotiate down the price. Number nine, reconsider where you live. Your biggest expense is rent. There can be huge differences in housing costs between different areas, depending on the proximity to the center of larger cities. Yes, it does help to compare the costs of different brands of olive oil, but the few shekels you'll save on buying a cheaper brand is absolutely nothing compared to the thousands of shekels you could be saving on rent by living in a less desirable location. Number 10, buy secondhand. So many people sell and even give away for free perfectly good secondhand furniture and clothing. As a newly married couple with little money, there's absolutely no reason you need to go on a shopping spree at Ikea to buy brand new everything. Take advantage of family and friends and neighbors and websites such as Yetstein and Django and secondhand Facebook groups for all your furnishing needs. Okay, this video is getting long enough. We're gonna cut it here. And if you wanna watch part two, you'll have to either wait for me to upload it or click here to watch part two of how to become financially stable in Israel. Thanks again for watching! You can click here to watch my previous vlog, probably one of my best, so you might not want to miss out. Click on the squares below to either watch all my vlogs, check out my channel page, or subscribe to my channel to be the first to find out when I upload something new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.